Hello everyone and welcome to the Extreme Teak channel. So for today's video guys, uh, we're gonna show you root, I'm gonna show you hot uh, filter flush in one pass and I'm gonna show you stick at the end. Uh, so for today I got uh, 6 inch T uh, <coughs> SCAD 40 with that uh, 6 inch nipple, it's a metallic fitting. Uh, as you can see I set up in the rollout but the uh, root is not going to be in the rollout, I'm just going to do the root and uh, hot uh, filter flush in position and the only stick we're going to do at the rollout. In the end I'm going to give you a couple tips, we're going to use a couple different uh, angles on, uh, on the root today, that's what I'm going to show you. Uh, we, it's going to be a combination of a back feed and constant feed. Uh, Lay wire, deep pink, a little bit of everything. And as I said, uh, it's gonna be filled to flash in one one pass and stick at the end. So stick uh, stick with me, show you a couple details, couple tips. We're gonna give you some uh, some tips. Hope you're gonna learn something. As I said, uh, we're gonna start at the bottom. We can uh, we can do two different angles. As we go 90 degree, that'll be like a back feed. That'll be like a back feed if you go like this, but we gotta lower down on the angle. You can do that as well. Uh, this is what we also do sometimes, especially in the field. It's like uh, 15, 20 degrees, or you can go just like normal, let's say like 30, 30 degrees, 35 degrees. Uh, that's what I'm gonna do on, the, on this one. So for today's video, is, uh, I'm not gonna use any filter for this, for this part. Just gonna show you like this. Lots of good things is happening inside the pipe when we don't see it when we're welding. It's kinda nice to see that sometimes. It's pretty neat actually. I like it. I just published that short recently. Uh, just uh, take a couple sections from these videos uh, just to show you guys. gonna use that filter for different uh, for different view of that root inside I'm gonna show you a couple things so for this to have that consistent nice uh, uniform root uh, just keep it that uh, rod connected you don't have to push that much just keep it connected all the time don't lose that connection and it should be nice and consistent always as I said uh, I don't know if did I mention 120 amps I'm using for this one uh, 1 8 rod 70s6 okay that's the different view now we're using filter you can see what's uh, going on here as you can see that silicone on the side a little foam like those bubbles they formed on the edge on the both sides that's actually what silicone produced and uh, one of the reasons why I like 70s6 is uh, gives you more control makes a uh, puddle more fluid uh, you can it's a uh, as I said, you got more control over than uh, over 70S2, which is a little bit dirty rod. It's a lot of impurity, which is specially designed for dirty applications, for dirty pipes. That's why we all like 70S6 as well. Okay, now we're gonna go a little bit more with that root, and then I'm gonna step. As I said, just keep that uh, keep keep that rod keep that rod connected with that puddle all the time. No need to push that much. That's why you got that nice and consistent uh, root. Okay, so from the outside, uh, I'm gonna show you how we're gonna go. It's gonna be inside that edge, and then we're gonna go up over that tack on the top. I got uh, three tacks. Uh, put the one tack on the bottom. This is where I. This is what I showed you already. I, that's where we started. All tacks are feathered. Feathered out. Okay, so if we do this, uh, it'll be like a back feed, and then we will go all the way up and finished here on the top. 
or you can go like this and this is how we're gonna go for this one so that's the angle uh, what you want to do you want to keep that rod uh, slightly inside so the stick out uh, for tungsten, tungsten is 1.8 stick out is like uh, approximately up to 10 mil but as I said before in my previous videos for reference I like to do a stick out just to push out by your hand the tungsten and just to touch that edge of, of that bevel and that should be good and by the way this is not a tungsten I was uh, welding in the next step it should be sharp as I'm always saying keep your tungsten sharp and we're gonna do a lay wire technique here okay so for any like any connection uh, all stop starts grind I, I always like to do that it's a, it's a kind of habit no matter what I'm doing take stick MIG I always like to I always like to grind my stop starts as you can see rod is slightly inside and then just keep keep melting keep melting keep stretching don't lose that connection and just go just go nice nice and slow Both I don't need to rush uh, on the route guys uh, take your time you want to have a nice and consistent uh, route Even if it's uh, start open on the side, uh, you can you can stop, you can pause, or you can uh, just go up uh, with your tungsten on the on the wall. You can go up on side on the wall, so and then you can just uh, stop if you want. Like uh, I was doing a lay wire here for up to two o'clock, and then I'm on a dipping technique. It's a little bit shaky that uh, the previous. Uh, well, did you see it? But I'm I'm welding in the inside the unit close to turbine, so everything is shaking. The entire unit is just uh, start shaking. Okay, so this uh, this this part is done. One side we're gonna do on the other side as well. Go so the same thing. We're gonna start preheat, and then we're gonna go up. You can go f like like this from the inside. Or you can go, just gonna show you here uh, a little bit more closely what's going on and where I'm exactly holding that rod. Or you can go from outside the root. Uh, what we're gonna do, we're gonna go from the, from the outside. So the same thing, it's like 30 degree angle. Just keep it on the top, uh, top of the puddle. When you preheat, keep it on the top and on the edge, uh, no need to push. Just, uh, just keep it connected all the time. Try not to lose that connection. And uh, just, uh, guys, uh, adjust, adjust your, adjust your amperage. You know, for to travel speed, uh, how much you can handle. Play with, uh, play with the settings. You know, I got lots of questions. Uh, how much settings? How much this? How much? It's what works for me doesn't have to work for you. It's always different. You know, you might find yourself uh, 105. I like to run 120. Some guys here can go maybe 1 130. I don't know. It all depends. It all depends how much you can handle, how much you can, you're fast, uh, what, what that kind of technique you're using. You know, you want to lay a wire, you're gonna go faster. You want to back feed, you might slow down. You want to freehand, you want to walk the cup on the route. It's all different. Okay, we stop here, and uh, now we're gonna go over that, uh, over that tack from the outside, and always on the tack stop a little bit, pause on the side. I didn't mean stop, I mean pause. Pause, try to melt, try to make that nice smooth blend uh, connection, and then just go over it. Uh, still keep adding wire when you go over it. Now we're gonna go over that tack. And I'm gonna climb them up. Once I pass that 9 up to 10 o'clock, I'm gonna start dipping. I always like to dip on a, on the top pretty much, unless if it's uh, really tight. And I'm gonna use a... I'm also dip, but I'm kinda using a keyhole technique if it's really tight. But in this case, uh, there's a lot of nice, nice, pretty much nice and even gap all the way around. I'm just gonna give, dip it and just connect to that... Uh, 
to the top part. Okay, that's it for the route. I'm just gonna show you a little bit closely. It's kind of sometimes you know that shadow. It's a little bit tricky, so it looks like everything. I'm gonna go show you a little bit closely how the route looks like. Uh, just that uh, little poor connection on the top, uh, but I mean it's it's connected. It's it's okay. It's just not what I was aiming for. And uh, stop start on that uh, nine o'clock. Okay. Now just uh, run buffing wheel, uh, clean that uh, from the outside, this is the outside of the root. And now we're going to do fill, uh, we're going to do hot and fill to flush in one pass. As you can see here we're going to fill all that, it's going to be in position. Usually there will be two passes like hot pass and then fill to flush. But I'm just going to show you how to speed up uh, the process and not to waste your time and energy. Okay, for the bottom part, uh, just on the bottom, preheat, uh, I'm running 160 amps here, uh, I'm still using the same 1.8 uh, rod, once you preheat, uh, you gotta push that puddle, keep it on the top of that puddle and just push it, it's uh, pretty much push, 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 push all the time. The way how you do that, uh, to be feel on the field to flash just gotta push it enough and then you can actually see the amount uh, that you got and you gotta stretch it on both sides and if it's filled to flush then you just uh, keep continuing doing that then you have gonna have that uh, feeling you know, that sense how much you have to push to, to keep it filled to flush to keep it flush and uh, this is what you're gonna get as I said uh, keep your tanks to sharp uh, kind of aiming down so it's gonna cover both sides as you can see here it's it's actually kind of looks like pretty deep looks like scat 80 actually but it's just the way how I did that route that's why it's uh, looks like a little bit thick and it, it is thick actually usually it's two passes but one pass is good enough okay I'm gonna shoot a little bit closely here now for the other part for the other part of the pipe same thing uh, as I said just keep it on the top uh, stretch it just push enough just keep push even if you got maybe 532 it'll be okay but then probably you have to go a little bit harder and 180 is good enough just just keep keep going just keep feeding that rod and it's like automatic okay that's it uh, fill to flush uh, that's all done now I put that uh, chain grip around, I'm gonna roll a uh, stick, it's gonna be in a rollout. Okay a little bit tip, this is a 532-7018, I've seen a couple videos, the guy's holding on the back side of, uh, of the pipe, like here, but uh, you, you might get uh, like a, I don't like that because it's gonna be a little bit thicker build up, I like to keep it here at 1 o'clock, if you run a little hotter, like a uh, recommendation on a on a box of 532 is 175 amps I like to go 185 it's a little bit maybe hot but it's uh, that's what keeps that uh, puddle running usually if that puddle touch uh, touches your electrode uh, it just might extinguish it might shut it down then you have to stop grind it and continue continue on but with that good amperage uh, you can have uh, and as you can see here I'm doing a little bit of manipulation on both sides just enough just to cover that uh, both edges I like 532 I mean you can even go maybe 316 so you don't have to manipulate nothing you just keep it there and uh, just keep it hot keep it under that angle inclination and it should be good that weld puddle actually covers everything. Okay, as you can see here now, that's all done. I run buffing wheel, clean all that slag. It's got a little bit spatter on the side. I'm just gonna use, uh, I like to use a uh, zip cut actually for this. I got a uh, six inch grinder. I'm just gonna clean all that. Uh, and I like to run my file on the both sides of the bead. Uh, just, uh, just the things I like to do. There's no actually undercut or nothing, it's just for me it just looks nicer. 
Okay, that's it guys, uh, as you can see here, just the little tie-ins uh, I did, some of them, they didn't really blend that tight, so I got a little kind of build up here, but you can always remove that with the flapper disc. And as you can see here, the thickness, it's not, uh, you know, you're not, you're not, you're not gonna get that uh, build up, and the weld bead looks uh, actually nice and consistent. Okay, that's it for today's video guys, uh, hope you find something interesting here today and uh, learn something, thanks and see you in the next one, bye.